Let us have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to massively thank you for today. Thank you for such an awesome time of worship in your presence. We acknowledge, Lord, that there is no one like you. There is no one like you, our God. There is no one like you, our King. There is no one like you, our Messiah. There's no one like you, our rock. There's no one like you, our savior. There's no one like you, mighty man in battle. There's no one like you, mighty man of war. We worship and adore you. We magnify your name. Father God, as we study your word this morning, we pray for insight. We pray for revelation. We pray for knowledge. Father, we pray for grace. We pray for great grace today, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen Amen. and amen. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let somebody shout a resounding hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow, God is awesome. God is magnificent. God is awesome. Happy New Year. Happy New Year once again, everybody. Praise God. Hallelujah. The year is still happy and the year is still new. So happy new year, everybody. Happy new year. Happy new year is actually a prayer. Because what I'm saying that your year will be happy. Praise God. So if you believe your hair, your hair is going to be happy. Say a resounding happy new year. Hallelujah. Awesome. Awesome. So today we're going to be looking at the topic, divine compensation. God is going to compensate you. God is going to compensate me this year. Compensation for all losses, for all damages, for all injury. The Lord will compensate us in Jesus' name. God has given us to us a theme this year, double. A year of double. Double means compensation. We're going to read a scripture shortly that will enable you to realize that. Our main text today is going to be taken from Isaiah 49, 20 to 26. Isaiah 49, 20 to 26. Praise the name of the Lord. The children which thou shalt have, after thou hast lost the order, shall say again in thine ears, The place is too straight. In other words, the place is too small. Give place to me that I may dwell. Then shalt thou say in thine heart, Who had begotten me this, seeing I have lost my children, and I am desolate, a captive, and removing to and fro. That phrase, removing to and fro, means wandering up and down. And who has brought up these? Behold, I was left alone. These, where had they been? Verse 22. Thus saith the Lord God. Behold, I will lift up mine hand to the Gentiles and set up my standard to the people. And they shall bring thy sons in their arms and their daughters shall be carried upon their sh- upon their shoulders and kings shall be thy nursing fathers and queens thy nursing mothers they shall bow down to thee with the face to the earth and lick up the dust of thy feet and thou shalt know that i am the lord for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me verse 24 Shall the prey be taken from the mighty, or the lawful captive delivered? But thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contended with thee. Amen. And I will save thy children. Amen. And I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh. (laughs) And they shall be drunken with their own blood as with sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. The Lord will bless his word in our ears and in our hearts today in Jesus' name. Divine compensation. 
I have good news for you. If you have lost anything, or if anything has been stolen from you, or if you've suffered any injury, this is your season of divine compensation. The, please note, the topic is not compensation. The topic is divine compensation. There's a difference between just compensation and compensation that God gives. So what I am talking about this morning is divine compensation. God will compensate you in Jesus' mighty name. So I thought I'll look up some definitions for the word compensation. So the dictionary says money awarded. It says usually money awarded to somebody in recognition of loss or suffering or injury by giving the injured party an appropriate benefit. That is compensation. Compensation, another definition says money that is paid to somebody because they have been hurt or because something has been lost or damaged. That is compensation. And then another definition says something that makes you feel better when you have suffered something bad. Everybody likes to be compensated. On our TV channels, on the radio, you will see all these injury lawyers. You know, what, do they, what is their slogan? No win, no fee. No win, no fee. Come. If you've had an injury at work, if you've had an injury that is no fault of yours, you know, don't just come to us. No win, no fee. What they are saying to you, look, we will take this case up for you. If you win something, we get you, you pay a fee to us. If you don't win anything, you make no loss. You know, so there's so many lawyers like that, so many companies that are willing to compensate. But that's man's compensation. What I am talking about today is divine compensation. Now, one thing I want you to note before I move on, you will not usually be awarded a compensation if you are the one that caused the injury, the loss, or the damage to yourself. So if you cause the loss to yourself, if you cause the injury to yourself, if you cause the damage to yourself, you are not going to get compensation. You may get a friend that may come and say, let me just help you. But that word compensation does not apply in that instance. So don't go to God and say, God, yes, I have suffered injury. I have suffered, uh, you know, but God says, is you are the cause of the problem. Mm -mm. That, it doesn't work like that, generally speaking. Unless God decides, you know what, I'm just going to show mercy. Praise God. And I want us to read 1 Peter 4.15. 1 Peter 4.15 in the New Living Translation it says, if you suffer, however, it must not be for murder. It must not be for stealing or making trouble or prying into other people's affairs. If you're a busybody and you say, ah, I suffered because I was a busybody. Or I suffered because I murdered or stole from somebody. Or I made trouble. Ah, you must compensate me. No, 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 no. You're not going to get compensated for behaving like that. So if you've lost something and it's no fault of yours, or if something has been damaged and it's no fault of yours, yes, the mercy of God will prevail and he will divinely intervene for you to get compensation. Praise God. There's another aspect we're going to look up into. It's called being a lawful captive, but I'll come into that later. You know, that's why I said, usually, if it's no fault of yours, you get a reward. Usually, if it's a fault of yours, you don't. But there's a case where you may be a lawful captive and God's mercy still prevails. So we're going to go back to our text, which is Isaiah 49. And I'm just going to pull out 10 areas that I want us to focus on where God, some lessons, some things we, we can glean from that passage, Isaiah 49, 20 to 26. The first thing I want us to note is when the Lord is involved, you will recover more than you have lost. So look at your neighbor and help me prophesy into their life. Say, say neighbor, 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 neighbor. I prophesy to your life that this year you will recover more than you have lost in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. It's a very good prayer. When God is involved, that is why we are interested in divine compensation. You will recover more than you have lost. Amen. Verse 20 states that, he says, 
that the children you now have, you know, after the previous one were lost, will say, this place is too small for us. What does that mean? So suddenly the children that have appeared in the house are saying, this place is too small. That means there were more children that came back than the children that were lost because the place was big enough before. So it means there had been an expansion. There had been an enlargement. And my prayer for us is whatever you have lost, no matter how big or no matter how small, God is going to make you to recover a lot more than you have lost in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Your latter will be greater than your former in the name of Jesus because God will compensate you. Joel 2.25. Joel 2.25, and I'm going to also read in the New Living Translation. It says, the Lord says, I will give you back what you lost to the swarming locust, the hopping locust, the stripping locust, and the cutting locust. It was I who sent this great destroying army against you. But God says, I am going to make you to recover all you have lost. The KJV says, the canker worm, the palmer worm, the locust, and the caterpillar. Whatever we have lost, even to this army, to this devilish army, God is saying this season is going to be a season of recovery. If you believe that, say amen. amen. When the Lord is involved, you will recover more than you have lost. The second thing I wanted to pull out from our text, which is an encouragement, is the compensation will be so huge, you will be all struck that you will be speechless. Amen. Amen. Huh? You will be awestruck that you will be speechless. Amen. Look at what this guy said. He says, verse 21, then you will say in your heart. Why is he saying it? He's, because he's looking at this sudden appearance of loads of children and he's wondering, I know I've made a loss. Where did all this come from? In his mind, he's saying it. He's so gobsmacked, he can't even open his mouth to say it because he's so wild. I pray that that will be your own portion too, in Amen. Jesus' mighty name. You know, and God gave me a scenario, and I think there was, a, there was actually a, a, a testimony, you know, but I couldn't remember it exactly. So in my mind, I just played out a scenario of a woman who has been barren for 20 years. She's tried to get pregnant. Every time she does, she has a miscarriage. Eventually, the doctor said to her, Ma, don't worry, it's not going to happen. And guess what? This woman gets pregnant. And then when they go and do the scan, they say it is not one baby. It is not two babies. It is not three babies. How many babies? Four babies. Four in one pregnancy. Four. So she stands on the auditorium, wants to give her testimony. She looks at the four ladies that are helping her carry these four babies because the benefit God is going to give you will be so much you will need assistance to carry it. She looks to the left. She looks to the right. She can't open her mouth. She starts to cry because she's overwhelmed with the magnitude of what God has done. That is how God is going to compensate you. Ah, your amen is not even born again. That is how God is going to compensate you. That when it is your turn to share, you will look to the left, you will look to the right, and you will wonder, God, is this me? Is this really me? And there was actually a testimony like that. A woman that had four babies in one go. In fact, I even went on the internet this morning because I was keen to find out um, this couple. There was another couple on the internet, but it wasn't even the one that came to the redemption camp, you know, that gave birth to four babies after waiting for 20 years. That can only be God. That is what they call compensation. So the journey that should have taken them at least four years, let's say they do a rush job, one baby per year, at least it should have taken them four years. God says, don't worry, I will compensate you. I will give it to you, one go, bam, like that. Four, wow. How many people want that? I know you don't want four babies, but you want, <laughs> but I know you want, you want quadruple blessing, eh? How many people want quadruple blessing? I want quadruple blessing. 
the promotion that should take you four years. God gives it to you now. Amen. You know, the house, the car, the dream, the dream job that should take you several years. God gives it to you now. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. They call it divine compensation. When you have it, you are all struck. In fact, you can't open your mouth because it is bigger than your, your words can describe. They say, tell us what happened. You're just watching them. God will give you that kind of experience in Jesus' name. Praise God. The third thing I want us to pull out from this passage, when the Lord is involved, the desolate experiences a turn around. Now, when people have losses, it is usually accompanied with a feeling of desolation. And I looked up the meaning of the word desolation. To be desolate means a feeling or showing of great unhappiness or loneliness. That's what happened when people suffer loss. But God says the desolate in this text that we read will experience a turn around. They will experience a change. A change will come to that situation that you will smile again. That sense and feeling of loneliness, God would take it away. And I'm not talking about being alone. You know, you can be in the midst of a crowd. Because of the feeling of desolation, you will feel like you are alone. You will feel that you are by yourself and that there's nobody else in the room or in the house or in the place with you. But I have good news for you. The God who is the God who compensates will touch upon your life and compensate you and take away that feeling of desolation from your life in Jesus' mighty name. Let's read Galatians 4.27. Galatians 4.27. And I'm going to read this one in the Passion Translation. Galatians 4.27 in the Passion Translation. It says, For it is written... Burst forth with gladness, O barren woman, with no children. Break through with shouts of joy and jubilee, for you are about to give birth. Hey, the one who was once considered desolate and barren now has more children than the one who has a husband. How is that even possible? The God, when the God of compensation is at work, the one who was called barren will now be the one who is a joyful mother of children. The one who had a husband who had been boasting that, ah, I'm settled, you know, I have, you know, that one is the one that won't even have many. By the time you compare the two, you're wondering, ah, I thought they said this woman was, uh, was barren. Now you have children running all around the house. God would do it in Jesus' mighty name. Now what you're trusting God may not be babies. It may not be, you may not be trusting God for babies, but there are things that you're trusting God for that will surround your table in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you. The fourth thing I wanted to mention in this passage that I found, you know, that encouraging, you know, is that when an individual experiences divine compensation, captivity will give way to liberty. Amen. You will no longer be captive. Amen. You know what? The worst, do you know the worst kind of, everybody look at me. The worst kind of captivity is the one that a person has and they don't know they have it. Do you know that that is the worst? And then many people have been captured. You know, the devil has got them stuck where he wants them to be. And yet, they don't know it. I pray for every one of you that God will deliver you from such captivity in Jesus' name. Many people have been held bound. They are walking around, but they don't know they are in captivity. The day they will realize they are in captivity is when they make an effort to move beyond where they are. That is when they will suddenly discover that, wait a minute, I have been in captivity and I didn't know. Some people have self-imposed captivity. I pray for you today. As, as the Lord of compensation intervenes in your life, you will release yourself to him and he will walk that turning around in your life and you will no longer be held captive Amen. in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. That is my Amen. prayer for everyone Amen. who is a captive because the devil has held many people bound but they don't even know it. 
Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Isaiah, Isaiah 49, 25. Isaiah 49, 25. But thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contended with thee, and I will save thy children. My prayer is that God will deliver us and bring us liberation in Jesus' name. God will bring us liberation in Jesus' name. God will bring us freedom. There's no joy in being blessed whilst being in bondage. I hope you know that. Which one do you prefer? To be freed or to be blessed whilst in bondage? To be freed. Because you can be blessed and be free and enjoy life fully. My prayer is that God will deliver each one of us from captivity in Jesus' name. The fifth thing I want to mention that I I could glean from this passage, when the Lord compensates an individual, he will fight on their behalf. And therefore he said in this text that we just read, he said, I will contend with those that contend with you. Hmm? He says, I will fight with all those who are fighting against you. You won't need to do it yourself. When God has determined and decided to compensate you, he will fight against all those who are fighting against you. Amen. In fact, if anything, you will be begging on their behalf. God will do it because Amen. it is your season of divine compensation. Amen. And that's why he says in Second Chronicles 20, 17, 2 Chronicles 20, 17. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed, for tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. God will fight your battle for you Amen. when it is your season for divine compensation. Amen. So if you're still struggling and still fighting, you're not enjoying divine compensation because when you are, you will, God will, the Bible says, God says, I will contend with those who are contending with you. I will do it. You will need to do it. Praise God. Hallelujah. The sixth thing I wanted to pull out from this passage that we've read, when the Lord compensates, Power changes hand. How many people are expecting that? Power changes hand. The servant becomes the served. How do I know that? He says, kings and queens will serve you. They will be the one that will be nursing father and nursing mother to your children. Amen. Power is going to change hand. Amen. There may be some people who are way beyond you by crook means. And they thought they had gotten away with it. When power changes hand, they will be the ones that will be serving you. Let's read what it says in Ecclesiastes 10.7 in the New Living Translation. Ecclesiastes 10.7. It says, I have even seen servants riding horseback like princes and princes walking like servants. Can you see how power has changed hand? Yeah? We read this and usually we pray, we pray, God, please don't let it happen to me in the negative. But it can happen to us in the positive, where you have been the servant, where you have been pressed, oppressed, pulled down, pressed down. God will so raise you that the oppressor will not be the one oppressed, Amen. that the servant will not be the one that will be served. Wherever you have been the servant or, or enslaved, God will turn the table around that you will now be the master. And those who have enslaved you will now be the one serving you Amen. in Jesus' name. Because power will change hands. I'm saying everything. Do you know everything I'm saying is what God laid on my heart to say? Amen. Last week when I came, let me mention this. Last week when I came, I had a different Bible passage in mind. This morning, God gave me this scripture that this is what you are going to share. 
So that means everything I am saying, you know, I had, you, you, I mean, if you, I, I didn't record it, I would have played it back. I had something else in mind to say about divine compensation. But God gave me this passage and said, this is what you're going to use. Power will change hands in your favor. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. When God compensates you, power will change hand. Praise God. The seventh thing I also want to say. When, when God compensates you, those who have previously enslaved you will lick the dust of your feet. Amen. Do you know what that means? It will bow before you. They will bow before you. They will lick the dust of your feet because God will humble them. That is the experience God is going to give each one of us as we experience divine compensation. Those who have tormented your life before will come. They will lick. Do you know what it means? To lick the dust of your feet. They will be humiliated. They will be humbled before you. Let's read what it says in Micah 7.17. Micah 7.17. They shall lick the dust like a serpent. They shall move out of their holes like worms of the earth. They shall be afraid of the Lord our God and shall fear because of thee. They shall fear because of us. They will lick the dust of our feet. When God is ready to compensate, that is why God said, I will be the one fighting. So don't, do, don't go there and be the one, you know, fighting and doing the drama and everything. No, no, no. If you do that, God will just leave you. None of these things will happen. He says, I will contend with them. I will so contend with them that they will get, they will get to a point, they will lick the dust of your feet. Amen. That is the word of the Lord for somebody. Praise God. Amen. If you are that person, say a big amen. amen. The eighth thing I want to bring out from this passage, the Lord will compensate those who wait on him and he will not allow them to suffer shame. That's what he said in that passage. He says, my people will not be ashamed. He says, you will not be ashamed. That's what we are told in Isaiah 49. You will not be ashamed. You will not be ashamed. That's what he says. You will not be ashamed. Let's read. Um, let's read Isaiah 61, 7. Isaiah 61, 7. And I'm going to read this in the Passion Translation. Isaiah 61, 7. It says, because you have received a double dose of shame and dishonor, you will inherit a double portion of endless joy and everlasting bliss. Yeah? God says, for your double, for your double, he says, for your shame, you shall have double, double honor. God will grant you double honor. Amen. For wherever you have suffered shame, and he will take shame away from you. Amen. Why do people suffer shame? Because you know, this is the height I'm supposed to be in, but you are still there. Your mates have moved on to that height, but you are still there. You know? So, so what happens? You don't congregate with them any longer because you are now ashamed. You don't stay with them any longer because you are now ashamed. God will deliver you from such shame Amen. in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. The ninth thing I want to bring out from this, and I'm going to turn, and then we'll round up on there. When the Lord compensates an individual, he will make the enemies to self-destruct. How many people like that one? Amen. Do you know what it means to self-destruct? The enemy will, you know, they will carve in consume their own selves. Huh? That, that is very powerful. God will make the enemy to self-destruct. You will wonder, what happened? What happened? I didn't even have to lift a finger. If you don't believe me, let's read the scripture. Isaiah 49, 26. That was the text that we read. Isaiah 49, 26. Look at what it says. And I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh. Is, is that not self-destruction? <laughs> and they will be drunken with their own blood as with sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. God will make the enemy to self-destruct. 
praise the name of the Lord. He will make the enemy to self-destruct. You won't need to go and look for where they are. No, that's not your business. You just hold on to the Lord. And he will make your enemies to self-destruct. That's how he's going to compensate you. Because for as long as the enemy is loose, they will keep coming back. Do you understand? When Pharaoh was still on the loose, in his madness, he decided he was still going to go and chase the children of Israel. So God said, no problem. No problem. The Red Sea was still open. In his madness, he entered into the Red Sea. I mean, you would think that anybody who has a correct brain would think, ah, I don't even understand how this sea is open. You know, you would think that his brain would say to him, please, don't even go into it. After all God did, after he killed the, all the firstborn of Egypt, he still went into it. Why? Because God had determined that he was going to self-destruct. He was going to take that final push that was going to move him into self-destruction. That is going to be the portion of our enemies this year. In Jesus' mighty name. Because God is going to divinely compensate us. In Jesus' mighty name. And the final thing I wanted to bring out of that scripture to encourage us. Number 10. The Lord will show and prove himself to us as our redeemer by buying us back. Remember I spoke about this one You know, I said usually people don't get compensated when the blame lies with you. But there's a case in the scripture that talks about lawful captive being delivered. So maybe it is your fault you are a lawful captive. You deserve to be in captivity. But the Redeemer is stepping in, buying you back because he wants to compensate you for that injury or that self-inflicted injury. He will buy us back as the Redeemer. That's how he delivers us and frees us from the jaws of the enemy. He buys us back. Redeem means it used to belong to you, but you lost it, and then a kinsman Redeemer comes, pays for you, pays for you, and buys you back. So you're no longer a slave to the enemy. My prayer is that each one of us will be redeemed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Ephesians 1, 14. Ephesians 1, 14. And I'm going to read this in the New Living Translation. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did this so we would praise and glorify him. God has bought us back. And the Holy Spirit at work in us today is the evidence that what God says in terms of him buying us back is real. Because the the Holy Spirit is the seal, is the guarantee that God had done that purchasing. Amen? Amen? Please, please, please don't yield yourself to the enemy again. You have been purchased with a price. God has redeemed us. He has brought us back. Let's remain in God's camp. Praise the name of the Lord. And if there's anything, the story of Job would encourage us that divine compensation is possible. Job 42, 12. Job 42, 12. The Bible says, So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and a 1,000 yoke of oxen and a 1,000 she horses. Not only that, he had sons, he had daughters. God compensated him for his loss. Now I have a question. Which do you prefer? Compensation from God or compensation from man? Which do you prefer? From God. Yeah. I want to sound a note of warning. Please, brethren, do not be fixated with compensation for man. This is was sounded in my ear this morning. Do not be fixated with compensation from man. Otherwise, you will forfeit compensation from God. 
If God knows that it is man that you are looking up to for compensation, you will forfeit compensation from God. Be fixated on compensation from God. And God gave me a scripture. He said, if an individual is working, I mean a scenario rather, before I read the scripture. If if an individual is working in a factory, for instance, and they lose an eye, yeah? They are working in a factory and they lose an eye. Yes, the company can pay them some money. They can give them an award of compensation. But can they replace the eye? No. No. After a while, compensation will finish. You know that. But the eye will still not be there. Some of us have had redundancy money. When you have the redundancy money, it's good pay, big money. But does redundancy money last forever? It doesn't last forever. God help you if you don't get another job. Quick, quick, quick. You will discover that life, life can become really bad very, very quickly. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to read a t- final text to us before we rise up and we pray. Acts 3, 6 to 8. And my question is, which one do you prefer? Compensation from man or compensation from God? For as long as your mind is on compensation from man, God will fold his hands and he will wait till you are tired of that one before he steps in. So that's food for thought for all of us. Acts 3, 6 to 8. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking, leaping, and praising God. And this is the, the picture God gave me. This lame man was asking for arms. They could have given him arms, which is like compensation, right? He will go and buy bread. He will go and buy milk with the arms. And guess what? Tomorrow, he will be back there begging. But they said to him, Peter said, silver, gold, we don't even have to give you. But we have rise up and walk. When God divinely compensates us, it's like rise up and walk. Because rise up and walk means you can go out there and get your own silver and gold. You won't have to be relying on man, begging man, no. You have the resource. It's like somebody being given the ability to fish as opposed to being given a fish. If someone gives you a fish, you're going to eat it for dinner. The next minute, you're hungry. But they give you the ability to fish. When you've eaten one, you go out there and get it. I want you to rise up to your feet today and say, Lord, the compensation I'm looking for is from you. Because I said this, because many of us, we are looking for compensation from human beings. Oh, she owes me a debt. Oh, he owes me a debt. Oh, that organization owes me. They can, all they can do is give you money. It cannot replace what has been damaged or ruined. The only person that can truly divinely compensate us in the real true sense of the word compensation is God. So I want you to bow your heads before him and say, Lord Jehovah God, I am trusting you for divine compensation. Better lift up your voices this morning and say, Lord, divinely compensate me. Divinely compensate me. Let me hear your voices, you know. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. The Bible says they affect you are. The fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We're rounding up, we're rounding up, but pray with every fiber of your being. Say, Lord Jehovah God, Jehovah God, compensate me for my losses. Compensate me for all my injury. You are the one that gave us that thing. Lord Almighty, this morning I have come to receive divine compensation. I said what you gain back is more than your loss. Lift up your voice and say, Father, grant me a recovery that will exceed what I have lost in Jesus' mighty name. Say, Father, grant me a recovery that will make me awestruck, speechless, 
gobsmacked in the name of Jesus. Grant me a recovery, O oh Lord God, that I would need people to come and assist me to carry the recovery in the name of Jesus. Say, Father, grant me a recovery that will best, O oh God, a turnaround in my situation. Say, Father, I am delivered. Deliver me from captivity, even lawful captivity. Deliver me from it in Jesus' name. Say, Father, let power change hand in my favor. Let power change hand in my favor. Come and contend with all those who are contending against me. Let power change hand, oh God. Where I've been the one enslaved and serving. Father, make me, oh God, to be the head, oh God. Make me to be the master again. In the name of Jesus, Jehovah, those who have been enslaving me, cause them to come now to lick the dust of my feet. Brethren, that is what the Lord says. Oh, it may not be the most decent prayer that you, you feel comfortable to pray, but it is in the Bible. It says they will come and they will lick the dust of your feet. Jehovah God, all those who have hitherto been tormenting, enslaving us, Lord, bring them, oh God, to their knees, oh God. Humble them, oh God, that they will lick the dust of our feet in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, Father, take away shame, shame and reproach from us. But then lift up your voices and say, Father, for my shame, give me double honor. From my shame, give me double honor. Take away shame and reproach from my life. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, and cause all my enemies to self-destruct, to self-destruct, to self-destruct in the mighty name of Jesus, that they will feed upon their own blood. They will consume their own flesh in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, you are my redeemer. You are my redeemer. Redeem my life, oh God. Redeem my life from the curse. Redeem my life, oh God. Redeem my life, oh God. Redeem my life that no man will be able to lay claim to my life in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now lift up your voices and begin to thank him for divine compensation. Thank God for divine compensation. Thank God for divine compensation. God has given this word and I know it is true and I know there will be a performance. You just watch the space. You just watch the space. Remember the warning don't look out for man's compensation. Look out for God because God is going to be the doer of it. God is going to be the doer of it. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Lift up your two hands to the Lord this morning. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your word that we have heard. Daddy, we thank you because it is you that we want compensation from. Yes, Lord. It is you that we want compensation from. Have mercy upon us where we have been looking elsewhere. And Lord Jesus, we ask, oh God, that you compensate us for all our losses, for all injury, for all damages in the mighty name of Jesus, for all our shame, for all our, our, our dishonor. Father, grant us, oh God, compensation in Jesus' name. The Bible says, for our shame, you will give us double honor. Father, for our shame, give us double honor in Jesus' name. Cause us to recover all that we have lost and more and more and more and more that we won't even have enough room to contain it in Jesus' mighty name. Let power change hand in our favor, Lord. Let power change hand in our favor. Let there be a turn around, oh God, for good in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen.